Did you know that the average American family throws away $1,600 worth of food every year? And if you're in the United Kingdom, you are likely to throw away as much as 40% of the leafy greens you purchase. Inflation has led to an increase in global food prices by 6.9%. It is no wonder many experts believe we are heading for an international food crisis in the coming years. The good news is that there is something you can do to decrease the amount of money you spend and waste on food. In this video, we are going to take a look at how you can grow your own lettuce in hydroponics simply and easily. We are going to discuss factors like seed sowing, which hydroponic systems work best for lettuce, and other important factors like nutrient and temperature requirements. As always, you can find all this information in our ebook. The link is in the description below. Before you start sowing your seed, you are going to select lettuce varieties best suited to the hydroponic environment. Oak leaf varieties are a great option if you are looking to harvest a handful of leaves every day, as you can continuously remove out the leaves and the plant will continue to grow. However, there are so many more varieties of different form, color, taste and texture that you can enjoy. For this video, we are using a variety pack of different lettuce seed. Once you have your seed, you will need some specialized hydroponic equipment to germinate your lettuce. You will need some rock wool blocks, small hydroponic baskets, and a watertight container. Start by giving your rock wool a good soak by placing the blocks in your container and flood it with water. Fresh rock wool may contain very small fibers that can be toxic when inhaled continuously. So to be safe, you might want to wear a mask and do this step outdoors. Once your rock wool is soaked, simply place two or three seeds into the hole in the block. You can then leave your blocks standing upright in the container, making sure it is constantly filled with water. Keep your blocks in a sunny to semi-shaded position, but be careful of extreme heat caused by direct sun as lettuce is commonly not tolerant of high temperatures. 17 to 20 degrees Celsius is the best temperature range for optimum germination. Within a few days, you should notice signs of germination. After the cotyledons, or the first set of leaves, have emerged you can start thinning your seedlings. The goal is to have only one lettuce seedling per block, so remove any weaker seedlings. Once your seedlings have put on some growth over the next couple of weeks, you can transfer them to your hydroponic system. Simply place the seedling and their rock or block into the plastic pot, and then put the pot and seedling into your system. Assuming you are growing your lettuce for your own home use, you need to select the best hydroponic system suited to your budget and growing space. While the deep water culture and nutrient film techniques are common favorites amongst commercial growers, they might not be suitable for hobbyists. So, if you want to start your own hydroponic system from scratch, consider these two beginner-friendly options. 1. Ebb and Flow In the Ebb and Flow system, a growing trough is filled with an inorganic hydroponic substrate like rock wool for example. The plants are supported by the substrate and their nutrient water is pumped into the trough. The water then slowly returns to the tank holding the nutrient-rich water. 2. The Kratky Method This is the simplest hydroponic system, making it ideal for beginner hydroponic growers. This is how it works. The plant is placed in a net cup over a container full of nutrient-rich water. At this time, the roots are just barely touching the water. As the plant grows and root system develops, the water is depleted at a rate so the tips of the roots are just barely in contact with the water. The rest of the roots not actively absorbing water are instead absorbing oxygen. By the time the water levels are almost completely depleted, the plant is ready for harvest. And 
as such, just one big water supply at the beginning of the growing cycle is enough to supply the plant until harvest time. This method is perfect for leafy veg like lettuce that grow fast whilst requiring little water. You can give yourself the best chance of success by growing lettuce in its natural growing season. For most lettuce varieties, this will be during the cool season. If you have mild winters, you can potentially grow your lettuce outdoors throughout the winter. If your cool seasons are a bit more extreme, either grow lettuce during the springtime or indoors in greenhouses. Like we mentioned above, the optimum temperature for lettuce seed germination lies between 17 to 20 degrees Celsius. During the later growth stages, ambient temperature can increase but not exceed 25 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the water can generally lie between 16 to 24 degrees Celsius. In terms of plant nutrition, lettuce specific nutrient solutions can be purchased to supply the plants with the perfect amount of essential nutrients. Like all crops, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are in most demand. Calcium and magnesium are also important constituents of an ideal lettuce fertilizer. Nitrogen is important as it allows for healthy leaf development. Phosphorus encourages healthy root development and carbohydrate production. Potassium also promotes healthy leaf development. Magnesium ensures optimum chlorophyll production for photosynthesis. And calcium is essential for crispy leaves and to prevent leaf tip burn. The pH and electroconductivity, or EC, of the nutrient water must also be monitored. If these are too high or low, it will prevent the lettuce from absorbing nutrients even if they are present in the solution. The optimum pH range for lettuce lies between 5.5 and 6.5, while the EC should lie in the region of 0.8 to 1.2 millisiemens. If you have the budget to do so, consider investing in pH and electroconductivity meters to monitor these levels. Pest and disease spread is a common problem any hydroponic grower needs to solve. Not only are the plants in close proximity to one another, but because they share a water source any pathogen or pest can easily spread throughout the plant population. Common diseases include pythium and powdery mildew. It is preferable to prevent these diseases from appearing in the first place. You can help do this by using clean tools and equipment, and healthy seedlings. In terms of pests, aphids and thrips are common problems. Chemical pest control can be expensive, so try practicing cultural control methods. These include regular scouting for pests, and mechanically removing the pests either by a strong hose pipe spray or by squashing the bugs with your fingers. Ultimately, the best way to prevent pest and pathogen spread is to keep your plants in a healthy condition. Any water, nutrient, and other stresses make plants far more susceptible to disease and pest infestations. If you have any advice for our other viewers, please share them in the comments. Remember to download your ebook before you go and we will see you in the next video.